Okay, so we want to create some correlations for these uh, 26 variables. I noticed there were 27. I noticed this this one. Um, my departmental leadership is very supportive. It had uh, two in there that had some separate responses. So I'm not sure what that was about, but I'm, I'm sure you and what that is. Um, so the first thing we need to do is go to data and go to data analysis. It's possible that you don't see that, um, depending on if you've ever used it before. If not, and if you're on a PC, you can go to, uh, whoops, you can go down to options, um, add-ins, uh, manage Excel add-ins, go, and then click on analysis tool pack and hit OK, and that'll put this tab right here. If you're on a Mac or if this doesn't work for you, uh, you may have to do some Googling to figure out how to get this to work. Uh, but once you have it, you click on it and go to correlation, okay. And as long as all your variables are right next to each other, you can just um, click in there. You can click on the top left corner of everything, including you want the labels in there. That's really important. And you just scroll all the way down and go to the bottom right, hold down shift on that. Um, where did my tab go? Oh, way up here. Um, my test appeared. Uh, so I'm going to try that again. There we go. I just pressed. And um, I'm going to try try that one more time. Um, actually, it looks like it did select there. That's the correct correct um, set of set of data. And you could always type this in manually if, for some reason, it, it didn't work out to select it. But we want M1 through AM158. Make sure you check labels in the first row because we did include those. And then new worksheet apply is nice because you can work with it. And, and that's where we get this correlation matrix. Now it's in a pretty nasty form right now because of the size of the headings. So I'm going to click on the left over here to highlight all of these headings. Um, go to home and wrap text a couple times to consolidate it. Then I'll do the same with A. And that'll put everything together really nicely. Um, then I'm going to highlight all of the correlations go to uh, actually home and conditional formatting uh, you can choose any color scale you want blue red is nice because it's usually accessible for colorblind people red green can sometimes cause confusion um, and then one more thing i like to do so you'll notice those solid blue ones one is the strongest possible correlation and those are because this is my inpatient correlated with my inpatient. It's, it's the same variable. So of course it's going to have a correlation of one. That's, that's meaningless. But what I sometimes do is just delete all these. And once you do that, the um, strongest correlations will really pop in a little more clearly because right now the ones are kind of overpowering the strong correlation. There we go. Now, for example, that, that correlation pops out. Um, now, in, in terms of terp interpreting these, I'm going to take these a little bit out. Uh, and of course, we can click on any of these headers if we want to see what that's correlated with. So let, let's take a look at this. This is a really strong correlation. So I understand which inpatients are appropriate to refer to. And I think it was, I, I forget if it was nurses and physical therapist or whatever there were two categories but the one category correlates with the other category really strong which means if if um, the nurses who were responding to the survey understood which inpatients they should are appropriate to refer to one category they also tended to understand which inpatients were appropriate to refer to another category um, so that one's a little more obvious uh, again, this one's similar because it's that two versions of my departmental leadership, very supportive, um, and I'm not sure what 
the differences were there between those. But then there's some that are maybe a little more interesting. So this one is still a, a strong correlation. Increasing the frequency of mobilizing my patients increases my risk. So you have nurses who are concerned about their own risk of injury. And nurses who rated that item high also tended to say, um, increasing mobilization of my inpatients will be more work for, um, and I'm not sure what this one was. You, you had the category. Um, but that one is a little interesting, a little more interesting, because here we have a nurse, nurses who are more concerned about their own injury and then, and what they think. Um, Here's another interesting one. So I, I don't have time to mobilize my inpatients during my shift work day. So people who are clearly feeling the time press tend to also be the ones um, that says increasing mobilization of my inpatients will be more work for. And maybe that was also nurses or something. Or my inpatients are resistant to being mobilized tended to be the ones who said they didn't have the time to mobilize. So that one right there, that's a pretty strong correlation. And that one's probably the most interesting of the ones I've read. So you can go interpret those. Um, keep in mind that a, a low negative is also strong. So this is also a strong correlation or a medium to strong. So the ones who said, I don't have time to mobilize my patients during the day also said that tended to agree less with the fact that the nurse to patient staffing was adequate. So the, more, uh, the more they felt it was inadequate, uh, the more they said they don't have time to mobilize their patient. And, and that makes sense, right? The fewer the nurses, the more the demands, the less time they feel for mobilizing. So I think you can get some interesting stories out of these. Uh, do keep in mind that they are these are <clears throat> what we call Pearson correlation coefficient R. And this means they're, they're looking at the correlation between two quantitative variables. So these would be treating these response, Likert response, as if they're quantitative. If you do make the decision to only consider them ordinal and not treat them as quantitative, you could do what's called a Spearman's row or a... Um, uh, Kendall's Tau, the two that I put in the chat uh, for you. But what, what would be nice here is you could specifically see the ones that you thought were interesting. And then the, the Pearson's uh, is going to be fairly close to the Kendall's Tau or the Spearman's rank in, in most cases. So if this is really strong negative, my guess is that the, um, the non-parametric versions will also be pretty decently strong negative. Um, but this would let you focus in instead of the hundreds here that you could look through. It'll let you tap into just a handful that you think are really interesting.